Hey guys, Haz here. You may know me from various dog training videos, but today I'm going to be reacting to Sean Strickland absolutely destroying a reporter. Just as I have strong opinions in the sphere of dog training and beliefs in the sphere of dog training, and that those opinions and beliefs are often not particularly popular, but I have no problem espousing them, I have the same when it comes to various socio-political issues, current events, so on and so forth. And I've decided that I'm going to use my personal channel as a place to air that out, as a place to discuss these things and, and, and talk about these things and react to videos like this. So if you're here for dog training, I'm sorry, I don't have any for you today. If you're here for the fun with uh, Sean Strickland destroying a Canadian reporter and uh, my take on all of it, feel free to enjoy. Let's go. Let's get started. I want to ask, you know, you're in Toronto. Welcome. Glad to hear it. It's been great. Are you Canadian? Uh, of course I am. Are you part of the fucking opposition? Are uh, you? Uh, I don't know how to phrase that. You, I mean, you got like fucking, oh, ah, yeah. Well, I did want to ask. Did you, you vote for Trudeau? Uh, you know, I'm not going to say. And, and let me tell you something right now. The man says he's not going to say. Like, if you ask him, oh, did you vote for Biden? He's like, well, I'm not going to say. That's none of your business. He voted for fucking Biden. Jonathan. So, hey. Absolutely true. So, when, he, when Sean says, are you the opposition, are you the enemy, right? Sean isn't a wordsmith. Sean isn't gifted with a golden tongue. What Sean has is, is honesty to the point of it's almost detrimental how honest he is. Whatever he thinks, whatever he feels, he lets it come out. And it often doesn't come out in the most coherent way or the most... Um, you know, it, it, he, he doesn't have the gift of the gab the same way someone like Jordan Peterson does. You know what I mean? But... What he says comes from his heart, and anybody who's a regular dude understands what he's trying to say. We all feel the same things that he's saying, right? He doesn't always say them in the best way, but we all, unless you're being disingenuous, you know 100% what he's saying. I like also how he asked him, did you vote for Trudeau, right? He's basically already trying to figure out who is this guy, what's his angle, right? Did you vote for Trudeau? And the guy weasels, tries to weasel out of it. Well, I'm not going to say. Why wouldn't you say? Well, you're a man. You did something. Why don't you stand on it? Right? You voted for Trudeau, you voted for Trump, you voted for Biden, stand on it. So, yeah, I did do that. Right? No one's going to kill you. There's no like risk to your, your life or your family by admitting it. Stand on it. There's too many people in this world today that don't want to stand behind their decisions. They don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to, you know, just stand two feet down on anything. You know, everybody wants to be wishy washy. Sean, I'm glad you've had great experience. So, this is, this is what I'm talking about, you guys the enemy, the enemy of Canada. Sure. Right. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive gay and lesbian yeah. community in this city. I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think... I'd oh, look, another... another. Gay gay I'm gay saying gay. the swamp, you guys. The swamp. Okay, so let's jump into this. Okay, so when Sean says the enemy of Canada, I know exactly what he's trying to say. So I, again, like you might be a little confused about it. I think most people aren't, right? We all intrinsically, if, if you're being, if you're any type of intellectually honest, if you've traveled the world at all, which I have, I traveled the world actually quite young. I saw a lot of places. I went to the Middle East, the land of uh, my father and, and his side of the family. Um, you know, I've, I've been to places in Europe. I went to Africa, a place where my grandfather uh, ended up uh, moving to after retiring in Canada. I went to these places and not did, I didn't go on vacation, okay? I went and I lived with the people because that's, you know, my family wasn't rich. You know, we uh, when we went to those places, we were visiting family and we lived with the people. So we got to see how people lived. And we got to see, you know, like what amenities were available. What were people worried about? Like, you know, what was the overall, you know, safety and law enforcement situation? What was the situation with utilities and, you know, with, with freedom and so on and so forth, you know? And I'll tell you this. Anybody that's been around the world, and I'm not talking about gone to the resorts and taken the guided tours, but like actually been around the world, understands that Canada and the United States um, over the last hundred years have probably been um, probably the best, if not among the top five best places to live, right? The most opportunity, and I mean the most opportunity for everybody, right? Everybody. Now, I know some people be like, ah, you don't understand racism and this and that and everything else. Yeah, there was racism in the 1920s. There's no doubt about that. But I guarantee you this, you want to talk about racism? Go, go travel a little bit. You don't know anything about racism until you travel, right? So Canada and the United States were not perfect places, but they were places where anybody could become anything, right? And especially lately, anybody can become anything, right? We're talking the last 20 years, the last 40 years, Anybody literally can become anything, right? 
uh, you can become the president, the prime minister, you know, you can hold high office, you can be an entrepreneur, you know, you can work as a police officer, you can, you can literally be anything you want to freaking be no matter who you are or what you are, right? And a big part of that was we had this idea, this fundamental idea that brought us all together, right? Open society, everybody has the, the, the right to produce, uh, to pursue life, love, liberty, happiness, religion, whatever you wanted to do, you could do it and there would be relatively small amounts of input or control from the state. That has steadily been degraded in the name of freedom, the common good, safety, security, you know it, right? So what Sean is saying is, is people like this, weak, Weak guys. And you can hear it in the guy's voice. You can hear it in the way he kind of like talks around things. You can even hear what, what's the topic this guy's going for. This guy's talking about gay and lesbian to a fighter, right? He, you know, you know, this little weasel went back and, oh, let me, let me find something that Sean said. Now, it's not hard to find something Sean said. You, you can go back like two days and find something Sean said. You don't have to go back a few years. But it looks like he went back and hunted up some comment Sean said about gay and lesbians or whatever else. And, and now he's going to try and stick it to him. This is what weasels do, right? Oh, look, I, I'm proving you're a bad guy. Now, again, this is Sean Strickland, so I don't know what you're proving to anybody, right? It's kind of like uh, trying to, to, to throw mud at a house made out of mud. But, uh, you know, let's let's continue on. You become a champion, you become a star, and then someone says, Let me ask you something. Are you, are you, are you, are you gay? Are, no, are you, are, are you, let me know, are you gay? Can I, can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking, I'm, this is the part of the, are you, are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. But, <laughs> an ally of the community. So Sean's trying to figure out here, before he goes off, you can see he's trying to figure out, okay, like, what's this guy's angle? Is he just trying to catch me? Is this guy like personally hurt by this? You know, and I think, you know, Sean's smart for that. A lot of guys would just go off. Sean's saying, what, what is it? What's your, what's your angle here? What do you, why are you even bringing this up? And then when this guy goes, I'm an ally of the community, I'm going to tell you what an ally of the community means, okay? Number one, this idea that there is like this uniform community of people that engage in homosexuality and they are like a single community and they all have the same thoughts, opinions, and ideas is asinine, okay? It's, it's, it's basically a form of, of, of neo-Marxism where you basically take, okay, all the black people think this way, all the Asian people think this way, all the homo, homosexual people think this way. It's, it's an asinine thing and, and it's, you know, kind of a way to separate people based on their group identity and then assign various levels of victimhood or, or um, you know, implicit uh, guilt to them based on that group identity. Now, what this individual is, is, is doing by saying an ally is, is, is he's saying, I'm, this is what an ally is. An ally in today's day and age is someone that is trying to signal their moral virtue by standing up for one of these, you know, particular um, uh, groups that have been assigned victim status. Now, the reality when, when it comes to, you know, the gay and lesbian community is generally from a financial standpoint, they're doing quite well. They are not persecuted or oppressed in any way. There is preferential hiring practices all throughout all levels of, of government and public service for these individuals. Um, you know, they're, they're not hurting from an educational standpoint. You know, as a community, they're certainly far from persecuted, okay? And, you know, it, it, this guy, I'm an ally. It's, 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 basically, it's basically saying I'm taking a moral stand without taking any risk, right? This is how people get to be a good person in today's day and age, right? They're not a good person by actually doing good works, by going out into the community, by sacrificing their hard-earned time, money, energy, so on and so forth, and giving it without expecting anything in return, you know, uh, really taking risks upon themselves, their person, their status, their income, whatever. That's, that's not what this type of person does. They say, I'm an ally, and they say words about something where we look in today's day and age it's, it's fun to pretend right like this is the, the the age of pretend where you say up is down and down is up so you can say oh you know like this persecuted persecuted community of like you know homosexual people or women or transgender or something and it's like the reality is they're not at all persecuted if anything they receive preferential treatment across all levels of society and government and media attention so on and so forth but this type of person could go out there and pretend to be a good guy by 
saying things like this and 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 poking at Sean Strickland, a guy like Sean Strickland, just a regular dude, you know? Let's see what Sean says. If you had a son and he was like, you know, you had a son, he was gay, you'd be like, oh man, you don't, you don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh man, well, dude, you're a weak f-ing man, dude. You're like, you're part of the f-ing problem. You elected Justin Trudeau, like, when you f-ing, when he sees the bank accounts, like, you're just fucking pathetic. And and the fact that the fact that you have no fucking backbone, and and has he shut down your fucking country and seized bank accounts? You ask me some stupid shit like that, go fuck yourself. Move the fuck on, man. Really, that fucking really the question. It's true. So, look, again. Sean's saying, I guess Sean's angle on talking about his son being gay was indicating that he would be disappointed that he wouldn't receive any grandchildren, which is not an unreasonable thing to say. Uh, I personally look forward to grandchildren. Um, the continuation of my line, right? That's a big reason if, if you're a man of, of, of any kind of self-worth or substance, you want to see your line continue. That's a big part of why we're here and a big part of the contribution what we're gonna leave behind us is hopefully uh, some genetic material that's infused with, you know, similar, you know, thoughts, opinions, beliefs, so on and so forth, that's going to continue, right? Um, you, fundamentally. Um, so it's not unreasonable to, 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 to say something like that. But then, but then he says, you're a coward. And it's true, right? Because he, he knows exactly what this reporter is doing. This reporter is just simply trying to virtue signal. This reporter is trying to pretend like he's being brave, standing up for the poor, oppressed, you know, uh, gay community when... Um, and 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 and, and sh- talking, you know, lecturing strong Sean Strickland or exposing Sean Strickland. It's like in reality, this guy would never walk up to a guy like Sean Strickland. He would never have that energy. Like if if there wasn't like you know a, a, a system of law enforcement and all this type of stuff, like just out in the world, this guy would never approach Sean Strickland and talk like that to him, right? Because he's not that the, he's not that guy. He's not that man of strong, virtuous, moral character that stands two feet down on something he believes. He wouldn't say it if there was a situation where he would personally be at risk. That's why Sean says he's a coward. And. But I did want to ask also things you said about the trans community. You said uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that. Here's the other thing Sean said that was true. He said, when your government, when Trudeau was shutting down bank accounts, was running people over with horses that were protesting against uh, COVID vaccine mandates, so on and so forth. He said, you had nothing to say. Because Sean, look, you might say, well, what the hell does that have to do with anything? He's saying that's like the important, what Sean's saying is this is the important stuff, right? It's not, why are we talking about, oh, something someone said about gay people once, even if it was like a really nasty thing. It's like, it's not important. The real important stuff is when you're absolutely silent. Like when Justin Trudeau is trampling over those rights that we just, remember how we talked about Canada and the United States being fantastic places to live, like better than anywhere else. And a big part of that is, um, you know, our, our, our rights, right? Or our, I shouldn't say they're not rights anymore. If the government could take them away, they're not really rights, right? Freedom of speech, freedom to assemble, freedom to protest, so on and so forth. When the government can just trample over that at a whim and you have nothing to say, when the government can freeze your assets because they're upset with something you said. This is this is this is the important stuff, not some some thing, whether it was a good thing or a bad thing that someone said about a gay person or a black person or a yellow person or a white person or whatever kind of person once. This is the kind of dumb shit that journalists do nowadays. Is they talk about things that are fundamentally unimportant to the situation that has made these Canada and the United States wonderful places to live, and now it's quickly becoming not the case anymore. You'd go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when, uh, when they know what, and they'll, we'll know what they stand for. Are you still gonna use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. 10 years ago to be trans was a, what? A mental fucking illness. And now all of a sudden, people like you have fucking weaseled your way into the world. You are, you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not buying your fucking bullshit you're fucking peddling. The world is not saying, you know what? You're right, chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they can fuck in school. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy's a fucking enemy. Uh, you want to look at the fucking enemy to our world? It's that motherfucker, right? So... I'm in full agreement with Sean on this, 
okay? Sean's saying what a lot of people think but don't dare say. Now, here's the thing. We have this word that we use, phobic, transphobic or whatever, right? It implies that you have like an unreasonable fear of a thing. So if you're arachnophobic, you have an unreasonable fear of spiders. This is an incorrect word, right? When, when you say something that, you know, it's like, look, I don't think um, transgenderism is a healthy thing. I don't think it is a thing that we should, um, you know, enable, um, celebrate in any capacity. I think it is a mental illness as it was deemed like less than 10 years ago. I think it was like in the DSM-4, less than 10 years ago, right? Um, I think it's a mental illness. I think it's really unfortunate when someone suffers from it. And I think the worst thing that we could do is is, is tell them, you know, um, I, now I'm actually bleeding what I think into this, but let, let, let me look at it first from Sean's perspective. What's Sean saying? Sean's saying, um, you know, uh, Sean saying this was basically a mental illness up until it became in vogue to call it something else. Um, not only that, he's saying you, like you're using, you don't, this guy doesn't care about trans people, right? Like he doesn't actually do anything for trans people or gay people or anything like that. This type of guy does not care. He is literally just using them to signal his virtue and to try and get some views and clicks, which he has definitely done right? Uh, not because of what he said, but more because of how Sean responded to him. Um, but he's, he's saying, you're a weasel. You're a coward. You are the infection that is wrong. You are the cancer that is wrong. And he's not referring actually to the trans people. He's not referring to the gay people. He's referring to guys like this, little weasels like this, that like to use things like identity politics to signal their virtue, empower themselves, and, you know, use the uh, stoke division and then use it to you know gain more relevance notoriety power whatever else right so he's absolutely right the world is full the, the us and canada are full of people like this and the majority of people remain silent because they are afraid to speak right if you speak out listen if i was still working for the city of toronto a place that i used to work for i would not be making this video right now Because I was working in management for the city of Toronto. And I know that if, if this video had ever come out, I would have been pulled in. I would have been forced to go to sensitivity training. I would probably have been suspended. I might have been fired, so on and so forth, right? That's the reality, right? That's the reality for most people. They are silent. They are in fear, right? Or they are misinformed. I have kids in school right now. I know the propaganda that they're undergoing right now when it comes to this type of stuff, right? Instead of focusing on the most important things that kids should be learning, read, write, do math, basic science, basic physics, uh, you know, the fundamentals of, 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 of building a, a healthy mind that is able to seek out and, um, you know, look at information and come up with, uh, come up with a, a reasonable, um, uh, what's the word? They can look at things and then they can come to a reasonable decision based on the, the information in front of them. Instead, schools are, have become indoctrination factories, especially in Canada. Like I have kids in high school and I have a kid in, in, in kindergarten. And um, the things that I hear every day that they are learning. So my kids are almost done high school and then I have the kid in kindergarten. Once he's done uh, kindergarten, I'm pulling him out of uh, public school. I can't trust the public school with his young mind. I know what they're going to do to it. And kids will literally believe absolutely anything. You can convince them of absolutely anything. So what Sean is fundamentally saying here, I, I kind of jumping back and forth here at the end because I'm in a, a lot of agreement with him, is that you are, he identified this guy correctly. You're a weasel and you're the kind of person that is destroying places like Canada and the United States. Now you might say, Has, that is an extreme, that is an extreme thing to say. This guy is just standing up for trans rights and gay rights and, you know, he's, he's not the reason why everything is, is falling apart. Well, yes, because all good societies, okay, are built on family, number one, okay? Nuclear family. Anything that takes away from the nuclear family is uh, generally a detriment to society, right? Whether it can maybe appear harmless on the surface or not, it is a detriment to society. Um, all strong and good societies are built on the nuclear family. And then second of all, okay, the right to free speech, the right to assemble, 
the right to you know pursue business, the right to do all the things that makes Canada and the United States fantastic places to live. Guys like this, right, are using their supposed concern for various you know identity uh, identity identity groups that are supposedly victimized, and they're using that as an excuse to pass various laws that restrict speech, restrict access to media, restrict the right to assemble, restrict the right to, to do business. They'll persecute you. They'll take away your ability to make a living. They'll scare you into being silent even if you don't agree. As I mentioned already, if I was like still working for like that city of Toronto, right? I wouldn't be able to talk about these types of things openly. So I understand what Sean's saying. He has identified this individual correctly. He is a weasel and he is part of the cancer that is destroying these once fantastic places to live that are Canada and the United States. I want you to end with this. Guys, we are all from different places. Our family all comes from different places. A lot of us are hybrids like myself, you know. I've got a, a Middle Eastern side that came here one generation ago, and then I've got a Canadian side that came here many generations ago. And my my parents and my ancestors on both sides struggled immensely, right? Struggled immensely to come here and you know, ultimately it led to me being born in this country. Obviously many of them never made it here, but it ultimately all led to me being born in this country. I'm grateful for all their sacrifices. I'm grateful for all the things that they went through, but we are all from different places. The only thing that will hold us together is shared ideals and shared ideals are, are not diversity, right? This idea that like diversity, like just believing in people being different is going to keep us together. That's asinine. What will keep us together is us having shared ideals when it comes to things like free speech, freedom of religion, um, freedom to pursue, you know, your life, love, life, liberty, and happiness, basically. Democracy. Uh, all these things that made this place a successful place, that people from all over the world came and populated this place, and for the most part, got along, right? And created this prosperous society that we all, we all now benefit from. That is in danger. Because we are losing our common ideals. We're losing our common morality. And we are fracturing, right? Like for me, I do view this kind of person as the enemy. I would never, like, you know, it's funny. I used to be in the military, right? And I think, I, I've said it before, I would never go to war for, for my country at this point in time. I would not go to war for my country. And before, I, would, I was willing to die for my country. At this point, myself, and I know a lot of other guys that used to be in the military and stuff, that they feel the same way, right? I know, and by the way, I'm not saying I went to Afghanistan or anything. I did not, okay? Um, and I'm glad I didn't. Thank God, eh? What a waste of time that was. That's a whole other thing, though. Can you imagine going to Afghanistan, losing a limb, killing somebody or, or dying there? For what? For what? That's another topic. We'll talk about that another day. Anyways, guys, that's my take on all of this. Um... I'm sure I'm going to catch some flack for these videos, but what the hell? You know, I catch flack anyways for, for all the stuff I talk in relation to dog training. So see you on the next one.